Hi everyone, this is Alexander Lim and welcome to Author Story, where, on every episode, we speak to a different author on a particular topic of interest. On today's episode is Danny Kofke, who is a school teacher who has more than a few financial smarts, which he is generously sharing in this book, The Wealthy Teacher, Lessons for Prospering on a School Teacher's Salary. And for those of you who are really interested and willing to take the plunge, you can check out his book right now by going, going on the Amazon link in the video description below. So Danny, welcome. Thanks for being with us in Author Story. Hey, Alex. Thanks so much for having me on. Cool. You're welcome. So uh, first off, Danny, what made you decide to write uh, The Wealthy Teacher? Well, I just know um, how hard it is, especially nowadays. We we read about you know people struggling and and not doing well financially, and I just felt like I had uh, a wealth of knowledge to share with others, just to show them that you can do well on a moderate income. Um, I am a, a special education school teacher, and my wife uh, is a teacher as well. She actually, when we had our children, she was a stay-at-home mom for nine years, so we lived on my teacher salary alone for that period of time. Okay, and then she. Got she got back into the classroom, and then um, a couple years later, she started working part time. So we're kind of doing it all on a moderate income. Oh, nice, nice. So, uh, Danny, I know you've written some other books on financial literacy. I mean, like, uh, I know a couple of them are aimed at families and children: uh, "A Bright Financial Future" and "A Simple Book of Financial Wisdom." Uh, yes. What made you decide to write the Wealthy Teacher? I mean, you've already got all these books out on financial on financial knowledge, financial know how. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, you know, and the other ones kind of, I mean, I'm not saying, you know, they're bad. Their one was geared for um, for parents to teach kids. And then the simple book of financial wisdom was just kind of basic information just to help people. And a lot of people, you know, struggle with the basic information, but I wanted just an easy, simple book for people to read just to kind of get control of their finances. Whereas I feel the wealthy teacher then takes it a step further, where it's just more of an overall blueprint, looking at your entire financial picture, and then just the exact steps that one needs to follow in order to have financial success. And I try to make it as easy to read as possible because a lot of people get thrown off by fancy financial jargon and they get scared. So just kind of real words, just from a real life school teacher, um, you know, I've never taken a finance class in my life yet. Right. We kind of have figured out. So that's kind of the premise behind is just to help others and to show them that if this school teacher can do it, then you can do it too. And here's the plan how. All right, nice. So, Danny, did you ever think you'd become a writer or a, you know, what you are now, an essentially a de facto financial advisor? <laughs> no, never, <laughs> never in a million years. Uh, and it just, you know, I kind of, I think God just had a, gave me a vision one day to sit down and start writing. And that was uh, my first book, Ali, 2005, so 13 years ago. Wow. And no, wow. no way, shape, form ever thought I would be a writer. But, uh, here we are four books later, and uh, I guess I'm an author now, right? Oh, yeah, <laughs> so, four no, times you, over. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, you just you, you just never know uh, what turns life will take. But, uh, but you know, once again, just to, to try to show people that they can do it. And, and that's yeah. the, the thing for me. A lot of people become very frustrated when it comes to handling money, mm -hmm. and they think, oh, my parents didn't do it well. I can't do it. And they just give up, and then they live this life where they hate their job. You know, mm -hmm. and 70%, I think, statistically don't like their job, yet they're sitting in traffic going to a place they don't like because they don't have control of their finances and that's you know i just want to show people a different way and, and show them that they can do it mm, right okay so danny what started you on the road to becoming as financially proficient as you are now when did, where when did this all begin you know, I think it, it probably stemmed from my childhood that um, it was one of those things where I, I saw my parents and growing up, we grew up, my brother and I, we grew up in a small two bedroom, one bathroom house, yet we were happy as a family. My mom stayed at home until I was in sixth grade. And, and even though my friends had a lot more things than we did, a lot of them weren't, they just didn't seem as happy as we did. So I think that was a great upbringing for me. So then, you know, when, when I got engaged with my wife, Tracy, we kind of talked about our future and we both kind of felt strongly about her being able to stay at home when we eventually had children. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, at that time, I was teaching uh, first grade, so making about $37,000 a year. So obviously, in order to live on, on that type of salary, we knew we couldn't have a lot of debt. We couldn't have a huge mortgage payment, car payments. And, things. So right. when we got married, we kind of set that plan in place 
in order to to achieve those goals of having her be able to stay at home. So I, I think you know part of my upbringing was that, but I just kind of looked around and I saw that there were a lot of people that I knew that had a lot of money, had a lot of things, mm-hmm. yet they were miserable. So I kind of thought, well, money, not saying it's not, uh, it doesn't help bring some happiness. It can definitely take away a lot of worries. Right. But for a lot of people, it's not the end all be all that so many make it out to be. Mm. Okay, okay. So, Danny, just to let you know, since we've got listeners all over the world, you know, I'd like to give them a baseline to compare with. What does a teacher in the United States make, and how does it compare with other professions? I mean, I, right now, this is my, so I'll just, you know, be completely honest. So, this is, I just finished my 15th year teaching, and for the first time, I made a little bit above $50,000 a year. So, I mean, over time, you can do, it's not not horrible but I know the starting salary, like when I started, and I know it's still that way in many, many states here in America, mm-hmm. it's about $35,000. And, and there's okay. just been some recent things in the news here where a lot of teachers are walking out and in different states, people were pro teachers were protesting because of the low pay. So it's one of those careers that th- there's some benefits to it. Obviously, you, mm-hmm. there's still a pension with most, most states have a pension system set in place and the health insurance is lower, but the starting pay for many people is going to be a lot lower than if they may majored in something else in college and kind of went into a different route. So mm-hmm. over time, you do well, but it's just, uh, you got to stick with it. And I think that's the hard thing with teaching too, is nowadays we're not just teachers. There's a, kids come to us so troubled with a lot of various home life issues that, you know, we're trying to teach them, but also we got to have, uh, we have those home life issues that we got to deal with too. So right. it, it kind of, it can be a difficult thing, but, but yeah, so, I mean, I would say overall, it's definitely a middle class, especially the starting salary. It's definitely middle class, if not lower middle class. All right. Okay. So, so that's interesting. I mean, when, when the, the, that those, uh, starting salaries, it's usually at a time in a person's life, you know, when they're thinking of uh, settling down or starting a family and, you know, the financial demands of having a family are, uh, are, are really, uh, something really to consider. Definitely. And, and, you know, nowadays with a lot of people uh, getting student loans, too. So you start off not only, you know, you're dealing with a relatively lower salary to start off with, but before you even have a chance to earn any of that money, some of it's got to go to pay off that student loan debt. So, yeah, it can be it can be really, really tricky. And that's, you know, for us, I think um, our part of our financial success. And I mentioned it earlier is having that plan in place. Um, I I think Zig Ziglar said, um, you know, if you aim for nothing, you'll hit it every time. So right. that's kind of the thing that you have to, and I think no matter what profession you're in or what kind of income you make, you kind of have to have a plan in place, some goals in mind, so you're working to, to achieve them because it's really easy to spend money without thinking about it. Madison right. Avenue spends billions and billions of dollars to get our hard-earned cash, right. and it works. So right. we got to have a plan in place. Right, okay. So um, I'd like to make a point of comparison now. Um, what is... Uh, well, first off, I'd like to ask about uh, the average person, the average Joe. I mean, may or may not be a school teacher, you know, the average average guy working at the office, stuff like that. Would you know what his uh-huh. financial situation of the, on the average looks like? Well, uh, okay, I will say there was a, a recent survey um, done by, um, I think it was done by Bankrate, and it came out a couple months ago. Mm-hmm. But it, it was something, and I don't remember the exact figure, but it was something like 67% of Americans could not cover a $400 emergency without having to borrow or, or dip into to credit cards or something like that. Mm. So most Americans, so the majority of Americans do not have $400 in an emergency account set up. So that's kind of the average American right there. Okay. <laughs> Crazy. All right. So, okay. Interesting. Um, yes. And so uh, in comparison, what does your financial situation look like? Well, we um, so we currently um, ha- have no debt. We recently, a few months ago, paid off the mortgage, so we, we were debt free. No credit card debts, no car payments, nothing. Okay. Uh, we have we have a one year emergency fund in place. Mm-hmm. We um, have a retirement account that you know we invest, and in, in if you know I can't predict what stocks are going to do, but if history right. holds true, then we'll retire with a, a sizable nest egg. But mm-hmm. I think you know most importantly for us is that we live wealthy lives on a moderate income. And part of that, you know, definitely had to do with that plan in place and, and sacrificing um, finance. I mean, it's really 90% behavior. Mm-hmm. Most of us know it's not smart to put something on a credit card and we're paying 25% interest. I mean, it's eighth grade math when you do the math on how much you're gonna be charged, right. but yet 
many, many of us are unhappy, whether it's with our spouse and our job and our life, whatever it may be. So we go out and we buy something to mask that unhappiness and it works for a moment. <laughs> and then we're, we're upset again. So then we got to go buy something else. And then we got to go buy something else and buy something else. I mean, in America, we have a fragrance, new car fragrance, right? That we can spray in our car to make it smell new because mm. we're attracted to that type of stuff. So mm. I think that's, you know, for, for the average person, I think that's what gets them into trouble. Very similar to, to losing weight. Most of us know it's not healthy to go buy our favorite fast food restaurant and order a number two and supersize it. Yet many of us do, and it feels good while we're eating it, but 10 minutes later, you don't feel so good. And I think a lot of that, that holds true when it comes to our finances too, is that we kind of do what feels good right now, and we don't think about the future ramifications of those decisions. All right. So it, it seems like from what you're telling me, I mean, I'm sure there are a lot of folks out there thinking, you know, if I make $100,000 a year, $200,000 a year, I'll be wealthy and debt free. But, you know, this really isn't the case, is it? I mean, you could be earning $200,000 a year, but you could still be in debt for tens of thousands. Absolutely. If you spend more than you earn, you're going to have trouble. I mean, it holds true whether you make 10 grand a year, 100 grand a year, or a million dollars a year. And there, there was a study done, um, it showed I think it was done a, a few years ago by Sports Illustrated, but it was something like 60% of NBA basketball players file for bankruptcy within five years of retirement. So you think about how much money an NBA basketball player makes, yet they, they're not wise with their money. They just spend more than they have coming in, and then it catches up to you. And, and there's plenty of celebrity stories out there of people that made millions and millions of dollars yet are in debt. So, yes, it, it, you just have to, to basically – spend less than you earn. I mean, that's pretty simple on paper, right? right, right. But then once again, like we talked about, the, the behavior kind of comes into play and then that leads to trouble. Mm, okay, okay, got that. So earlier on, Danny, you were talking about a plan, uh, you know, planning uh, finances or planning planning out the future, uh, mm -hmm. plan out the future. So uh, what essentially is this plan all about? What's the essential essence of this plan? Well, you just have to have some goals in place of where do you want to be? And they're short-term and long-term. You know, how much money do I want to have in my savings account this time next year, five years from now, 10 years from now? And just some of those goals that you have for yourself. And then also you have to know why do you want to have those goals? Because your why will help you um, achieve those much better than just having a goal. It's pretty easy. And an example for me is, you know, I want to have a, a set of money in retirement so I can spoil my future grandkids who aren't even around right now and won't be around for years, but right. I want to be able to, to have the freedom to take trips and have family fun times with them. So I have a picture that uh, we took our daughters a few years ago to Disney World, and I have that picture that I look at when I'm tempted to buy something. Like I drive right now, my car is uh, it's 16 years old, right? So I can't even charge my iPhone in it because it was made before the iPhone. So okay. it's an old car. So I could justify going and buying something new, but I haven't had a car payment in 14 years. So instead of paying $500 a month for a car payment, mm -hmm. I'm able to save that money, invest that money instead. And I take a look at that picture and say, you know what? One day when I have grandkids or whatever, I'll be able to take some really cool, magical family trips because I'm saying no right now to something that I could really want for something later. But I have that goal in place. And then I also know my why. Why am I saving money? So I can do this. So I think that's where we have to start is just come up with those things. Because then when you're working towards it, it makes it much easier to say no to something today because you're working towards something. Okay, so it seems like, you know, you get, you, it's something like you got to have the end in mind uh, when, mm -hmm. when you consider this thing. Definitely. You have to because it is, like I said, a lot of people were unhappy day to day and it's easy to go and buy something to mask that unhappiness. So you have to have that carrot on a stick at the end that you're like, okay, I'm working towards this and I'm big about putting pictures up, writing it down, looking at it. So, you know, this is why I'm saying no right now because I'm working towards this. Okay, cool. So uh, let's go over a couple things first. So Danny, what are some of the financial strategies you cover in The Wealthy Teacher? I mean, I start off and basically, since obviously it's kind of geared towards school teachers, can benefit right. anyone, but you know, right. geared, geared towards teachers, I, I have what I call the School of Financial Freedom. And I basically okay. start in kindergarten, goes through 12th grade, and I just list step by step things to do to get you on the path to financial freedom. And you know, for me, you have to start off with, and in my first in kindergarten, what I say is you have to know your why and set goals. 
that you have to have those in place before you can do anything else. And then I go over things like having proper insurance. And, you know, most of us know about having homeowners insurance, car insurance, insurance, but there are people out there that rent and they don't have renter's insurance. It's something to look at to get that. Also, people don't, a lot of people don't have disability insurance. And that's something where if you're working and God forbid something happened and you're no longer able to work, it's basically like paycheck insurance. So you're going to have some money still coming in if you're injured. Another thing that a lot of people overlook is life insurance. And no one likes to talk about it because we don't like to talk about our death. But I mean, let's face it, we're all going to die. I mean, right? So it's important to have that, especially if you have people that are depending on your paycheck that, that are going to be behind. For me, I have a 14-year-old and 11-year-old daughter. So I need to have a life insurance in place where if something happened, my wife would be able to help send them to college, marry them, those types of things. People don't like to think about it, but um, that's something that I mentioned too, because it's often overlooked. And also with that, getting a will. It's important to have a will. It's not fun, not exciting, but your family will definitely thank you. It's part of leaving a legacy. So I kind of cover those things. And then we can kind of get into the financial specifics of, you know, I start off by saying, save one month worth of expenses. That's where we want just in a basic savings account. I don't care. Right now they're paying 0.001 interest. We're not worried about interest. Mm -hmm. I just want money set aside that if a car dies, you can go pay for a new battery on the car, get new tires, whatever, without having to put it on credit. So it's important to have a little, to start off with, have that emergency fund, have a a buffer in place. That way, if something happens, you're able to cover it and not go into debt. Um, And then after that, we talked about getting out of debt, eliminating all your debt, except your mortgage, if you have a mortgage. But we've got to get rid of that student loan debt, the credit card debt, the car payments. I mean, you think about when you have debt, it's like basically you're going to, before you even work an hour, you already owe that money to someone (laughs) before you, because you you have that debt. So it's just this thing around your neck that we've got to get rid of it as quickly as possible. So I go over exactly how to get rid of that debt, fastest way, best way to do it. Um, and then talk about building up that emergency fund even more. And, you know, for a lot of financial people recommend to have at least three to six months worth of expenses in an emergency fund and an emergency account. Things will happen. I talk to people and they're like, oh, I just have the worst luck. I mean, let's face it. If you drive a car long enough, it's going to need new tires. If you live in a house long enough, the roof's going to leak. If you have kids, they're going to break something. It's not called bad luck. It's called life. It happens. But having that margin in place, it prevents, I mean, it could turn what could be a major catastrophe into an inconvenience instead. Um, So I mentioned that. Then I also talk about saving for retirement and and just the different types of options when it comes to 401ks, 403bs, mutual funds, individual stocks, all those types of things. I kind of go over that and and kind of what, uh, you know, what the best fit is for most people, um, you know, and it's just kind of looking at a general view of it for, for many people. It's probably, especially teachers, it's good to just do mutual funds and your, and whatever your, your school district has set up, whatever type of retirement account, but I kind of go over different options for others as well. Yeah. And then basically, you know, towards the end of how to pay off your mortgage and to be done with that. And then just kind of how to, how to be financially free. And then when you get to the point where, you know, you're not in debt, when you have money set aside, you're saving for retirement, it's kind of you have the freedom in life to, to pursue things that you're called to do. I mean, what a great position to be in that you go to work Monday morning and you're at a job that you really don't like and your boss doesn't like you and you know your boss gets in your ear and yelling at you, this and that, and you really don't feel passionate about it. If you're in a position where your finances are taken care of, you can you can afford to leave that job and go find something that you're more passionate about that's a better fit for you. So I think, you know, that's the goal is just to show people to, to achieve, to be able to do that, because I think, you know, if we were all able to do what we were put on earth to do. Man, this world would be a, a really neat place if we were all living out our passions. And it's not going to happen for everyone. I get that. I mean, it, but but I think it's important to strive for because then I think it makes life a lot richer than just going and doing something, working nine to five at a job that you don't really feel like and spending every Monday through Friday doing something you really don't want to be doing. Um, yeah. Kind of want to change that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And uh, definitely, um, you know, having financial freedom to do more or less what you want is is really what really, I think, really makes a lot of folks really happy, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's, you know, the title, obviously, The Wealthy Teacher, and wealth is, is so subjective. It just depends on what you think of it. I, I didn't say the millionaire teacher. I said wealthy because, you know, some people are millionaires, but I wouldn't consider them wealthy. I know people that have a lot of money, yet they don't talk to their family anymore. Their family doesn't like them. They don't have friends. To me, yeah, that's not really a wealthy life. So 
I think to me, it's just about wealth is just kind of being able to have the freedom to pursue those things that you, that you are passionate about, no matter what the cost or how much it costs you to do or, or how much you're going to make. So I, I think for me, that is kind of the way I look at it, uh, a bigger, wider view of what, what it means to be wealthy. Okay. Okay, cool. Got that. So, all right. So, uh, Danny, uh, if, if it's okay with you, uh, I, I just like to give uh, our listeners, a, a concrete example of uh, something that you did that is aligned with the, the the financial plan that you set up. Can you give us sort of like an example, like when you started this, you thought like this maybe ten years from now, fifteen years from now, and this how you work to to achieve that financial goal, something like that. Yeah, sure. So, um, so shortly after my wife and I got married, um, in we got married in the year 2000, June of 2000. Two months later, we moved to Krakow, Poland, and we taught at an American international school over there. So we did that for two years. It started off a great way to start off our marriage. Um, and just we were able to travel around Europe, just kind of a, a neat experience for us. But we knew we, were, we signed a two-year contract, so we were going to come home after two years back to the States. And we knew, okay, we're going to have to have money set aside for a down payment, cars, those types of things. So every single month while we were over there, instead of blowing all the money on trips, and despite that, we still visited 11 countries and we did some really fun things. But we also, before we had a chance to see it, spend a touch it at the beginning of the month when we got paid, we had was something like $800 taken out of our pay and set aside in a savings account. So we just did that every single month. And then after two years, we came home and we had over $20,000 to start our lives here in America. Nice. So that was something that we planned ahead and, and we paid ourselves first. So we took it out before we had a chance to see it, spend it, touch it, get used to it, blow it on something. We mm -hmm. set it aside. So that was something that was huge for us. But once again, that, that required planning ahead. But then, and I think this is an important thing for many people, whether it comes for building up your savings account, saving for retirement, paying yourself first. And that's what we did a lot of times when we, we do our bills, we pay ourselves last. It comes last, we pay everything else, and then whatever's left over, we save or we invest. So we flipped that and we put ourselves first. So we took care of ourselves first and then everything else came next. And that ensured that we did have money when we came home and that for right now, when we save for our retirement, it's going to ensure that we're going to have money set aside when we retire because we do it first. So I think, you know, I think of it like the government, the government, they take out taxes first out of every single check. If in America, the federal government waited till April and said, OK, here's your tax bill and they didn't take anything out. I think many people would not be able to pay that tax bill because we'd blow everything. So the government's right. smart in that way that they take it out before we have a chance to blow it. And I think the same thing we have to do with ourselves, set it up so you're paying yourself and tricking yourself basically before you have a chance to spend all that money. And then the beauty is when you do that, even if you do blow your entire paycheck, you know you're still setting aside some money for savings. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. Cool. So uh, I, I just like to bring up this point. I mean, you probably mentioned this before, but you know, some people have this impression. Okay, I t remove this money before before I do everything else, and oh my God, I might feel de feel deprived or something like that. This was not really the case with you, was it? No, no, it wasn't. But um, you know, because we still did other stuff, we made it work on what was remaining, and I think that's especially for younger people that are just starting off in their careers, I think that's a huge step to take is when you kind of get used to what you have coming in, mm -hmm. it's it's easy to, to kind of spend all that. But when you're able to set it aside before you have a chance to get used to all of it, it just makes, it, it helps you live on less. And that's the thing. We, we have to be able to do that, especially at the beginning to set that money aside so we have that margin in our lives because life is going to happen. I mean, like I said, you're going to get in your car one day and it's not going to start. I mean, it's just yeah. a fact. So when you have that emergency fund in place, you're able to just go and do what you got to do with it to get it running again. And you don't have to think twice about it. So I, I think, yes, I understand where some people say, oh, I'm going to deprive myself. And I, right. I understand that. I see that point of view when you're used to living on all of it. But then I think of the, the reverse of it. If you do not do it, then one day you're going to have to put it on credit and then you're going to be paying 24% interest on that. And then you're going to be behind the eight ball the rest of your life. So to okay. me, yes, you do have to make a little sacrifice. Absolutely. But in the long run, it's going to pay off. Right. Nice. Okay, cool. So, uh, Danny, I know you probably uh, touched on this earlier, but let's say, um, let's say you came across someone, a young fellow, a young man, a young woman, just starting off on life. Uh, on a career path, 
uh, guys most likely get gonna be something like the average person you know regular salary regular paycheck could even be a teacher much like, much like yourself right and you had only enough time to tell that person one thing about how to live a life of financial freedom what would be that one thing you would tell that person well probably the biggest goal I would say you know we've talked about setting goals and those things but another thing as well is I would say track your spending know where your money is going, especially when you're on a moderate income. When I financially coach people, it's amazing that they have no idea where their money is being spent. And and people will say, gosh, you know, I don't realize I I went to Starbucks 10 times this month or went to the movies or whatever it may be. So my thing and what worked well for my wife and myself is after getting married, we tracked our spending for one month. And at that time, we didn't have smartphones. So we walked around with a piece of paper and a pencil and we wrote down everything we bought. And then at the end of the month, we analyzed it. And it made it personal to us. It's like, okay, wow, we did this, we did that. And then that helped us create a budget. So, and in our budget, you know, we list those things that come out automatically. We had a little blow money, but we knew exactly where every dollar was going. And I think that's for many people in America. I know there's people that don't make a large salary and it's probably tough for them. I get that. For them, they may need to get another job or a higher paying job. But most of the people that I speak with, they don't have an income problem. They have an outgo problem. And I think that is the biggest thing is when you track your spending, you can see exactly where your money is going and then you can make those changes so you can keep more of that money. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, yeah, that's definitely a different way of looking at things. Okay. Yes. <laughs> definitely. So, Danny, the last couple of minutes or so of this interview, are there any last words of wisdom you'd like to share to inspire listeners? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, overall, I just want to show people that if I can do it, you can do it as well. And yes, there's going to be some pain. There's going to be sacrifice. There's times that you're going to have to say no, but it is so worth it in the long run. You never know what life, what opportunities life will throw at you. For me, I wrote my first book. I mentioned it. It came out in 2007. So I wrote it in 2005. So 13 years ago. At that time, the publishing industry was completely different than what it is now, and I had to pay. Basically, I had to pay. It was almost two months' worth of my salary to have that first book published. It was with, and I know a lot more about publishing now than I did then, um, but it was my foot in the door. Well, I was able to do that. I earned my money back through sales, and then because of that, I was able to write three other books. I've been on, I mean, this. I've been over 600 radio shows. I've been on national television. I've had a number of great, wonderful, cool experiences but it was because I was able to take a chance on myself because we had that money set aside. So I, I encourage people, you never know what's going to happen. A lot of people say, oh, I've never had that break. Well, uh, you know, a lot of times people do have breaks that come their way, but they're not able to take advantage of those because they don't have the funding in place. So that to me is such a key is just save that money. You never know what, what God will put in, in store for you. And then when you're able to take advantage of that, who knows what can happen? And then, you know, on a, a final thing too, I know a lot of people, we talk about saving some money on my website. So I encourage you, if you want to visit it, it's a um, www.wealthyteacher.weebly.com. So wealthyteacher.weebly.com. And there's a contact form on that page. And I have an, a free ebook that I'll send you basically 145 ways that you can save money this year. So I list just uh, numerous tips and they're not all going to apply to everyone. That's why I have a bunch on there. But if you add them up, you can save almost $60,000 this year. So it's one of those things that just kind of take a look at it and use some of the tips that may apply to you. Like I said, not all of them will, but I would imagine that some of them, um, you know, at least one will apply to someone, to, to any person that fills it out. So right. if you go ahead and visit my site and you fill out that contact form, I'll send that over to you. So uh, hopefully get you started on your financial journey. All right, cool. So what's the uh, website again, Danny? Can you just repeat it? It's uh, www.wealthyteacher.com dot weebly so w-e-e-b-l-y mm-hmm. dot com and i think honestly if you just google wealthy teacher i think it's the first thing that comes up too so maybe the, right. the easiest way okay cool so thanks for those words and you know thanks for the information so um in closing then the book is the wealthy teacher lessons for prospering in the school teacher salary the authors are guest danny kofke and danny thanks a lot for being an author story i must say it was very instructive for me Awesome. Thank you so much for having me on. I hope uh, hope the listeners get, get a lot out of it and help them <laughs> um, get on the right financial path. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. So, everyone, 
I invite every, I invite you all to check out the Wealthy Teacher, and of course, please feel free to subscribe to our channel since you'll never know what you can pick up from listening to our interviews. So I'll catch you all next time on Author Story Weekly Interviews with another awesome author.